Quick disclaimer here, I suffer from a condition called fibromyalgia and chronic fatigue is one of its key symptoms. I am not speaking from the perspective of someone with chronic fatigue syndrome, which is a similar but separate illness. Minor spoilers ahead for Hades by Supergiant Games. While I didn't play Hades myself, I have a pretty big attachment to it. Hold up on the couch in debilitating pain, falling in and out of sleep constantly due to chronic fatigue, I watched my roommate play it. They would turn on the system, sit down, and set to work on finding a way out of the underworld, and I would watch with bated breath. When you are newly chronically ill, the realization that this productivity-obsessed capitalist culture now sees you as dead weight hits like a ton of bricks. You were once seen as a person, a contributor to society, only to now have your existence be forgotten about or ignored, and your worth questioned simply because your body decided to play a cruel joke on you one day and stop functioning properly. And when you barely have the energy to get up from your resting spot and are watching media endlessly as some form of sweet escapism your deprived little brain is craving, well, it suddenly becomes apparent that there isn't very many characters you can relate to. It becomes glaringly obvious that disability and chronic illness rep is practically non-existent. And when it is there, it's incredibly depressing and hopeless, which is the last thing you want to see when you're already feeling like a useless sad sack. But Hades, in its cast of fantastical characters, had one character that piqued my interest more than the rest. Hypnos, the lovable god of sleep with his sweet little voice and snappy commentary, totally stole my heart. To see a character who could also barely keep their eyes open meant more to me than I realized. Typically, when you see a character like that in the media, the narrative makes it very clear that people like that are lazy and need to do better to conform to society's arbitrary and often ableist rules. They become the butt end of a series of relentless jokes about their supposed uselessness. But Hypnos' portrayal wasn't like that at all. It's not that his storyline is rosy and idealistic, though, either. He's initially criticized by his brother Thanatos and his boss Hades, but is incredibly lovable despite his quote-unquote shortcomings. I grew to really look forward to every time Zack died. Wow, that sounds so bad. <laughs> I promise I wasn't praying for my roommate to lose as they played. They're probably watching this right now like, I see you, you bastard. But I really did look forward to seeing him again. I find some roguelikes kind of crush your soul a bit with how damn often you have to start again at the beginning. But having Hypnos to look forward to kind of mitigated the frustration a bit. I love that they didn't punish him for being the sleepy little dork that he is. And they didn't ultimately force him to change his nature, either. He is eventually praised for doing the best he can, despite falling asleep on the job. He does a really good job in his waking hours and even draws little pictures in the margins. Something he was chastised for at first, until it was realized that the drawings help include more context to his notes. I believe Hades poshly refers to it as iconography when he praises it, which always kills me. I'm going to refer to my drawings that way from now on. Hey Dark, what are you drawing? It's not a drawing. It's iconography. <laughs> Moving on. What initially seemed like shortcomings were actually just part of who he is. And they were kind of trying to shove a square peg into a round hole. It's kind of like that popular quote that everyone always misattributes to Albert Einstein. If you judge a fish by its ability to climb a tree, it will live its whole life believing that it is stupid. When they tried to change him, it didn't work. It was when they started to become more accommodating for his quirks and differences that they really started to see him shine. We don't all have to contribute in the same way, and the way they wrote it really underlines that simple truth. And Hypnos, to me, was what author Devin Price's chinchilla named Dump Truck was to him. Now stick with me here, as I'm aware that was a very bizarre string of words that just came out of my mouth. Devin Price is a social psychologist and author of the book Laziness Does Not Exist, which was inspired by a revelation he had while observing his fuzzy little friend. It hit him one day how truly bizarre it really is that we as humans judge our right to exist by how useful we are. We wouldn't look at this sweet little chinchilla and try to sum up his worth by all the things he did that day, and how he went about doing it, because it would frankly be absurd to do so. And for me, it was when I was watching my roommate play Hades for hours on end that I had the same exact realization by way of Hypnos. Why do I find him so utterly lovable? While I judge myself so harshly for displaying the same qualities, Devin Price summed it up pretty well in this quote. We're fine and beautiful and completely lovable when we're just sitting on the couch just breathing. And if we can feel that way about animals that we love and about, you know, relatives that we love and people in our lives who we never judged by their productive capacity, then we can start thinking of ourselves that way too. With each development in Hypnosis' plotline, I became more and more enamored. 
And I felt seen, too. Aside from being a fellow sleepy little dude, I related to him in other ways, too. I'm an artist, and while my condition makes it really difficult for me to draw now, I too like to sketch little pictures on the margins of my pages. And all through school growing up, I was punished for it as well, even though it helped me concentrate in class. Not to mention his bizarre brand of humor and lack of tact. I've always been told I have issues on that front as well. He loves lists, and I love lists. Hell, I've always got some new list going on in my notes app. Seeing how beloved the character is in the fandom also helped me a lot too. I'm a pretty headstrong person that typically wears my otherness as armor. I refuse to cut myself up into digestible pieces for people who think I'm too much. I don't really seek approval from others most times, but it does feel incredibly nice to see how people cheered him on, even while he was constantly dozing off. Players found it cute and endearing, and it gave me hope that maybe I wasn't so worthless after all. My chronic fatigue is something I felt really ashamed of in the beginning, especially since previously I was a really productive go-getter. It depressed me that I was always uncontrollably falling in and out of sleep, exhausted by the simplest of tasks. But with Hypnos in mind, it became a little easier to be kinder to myself. I'd remind myself of him and how adorable I found him and his habits. He's sleep incarnate, he can't help it, and neither can I. Maybe it's okay if I need a nap or two in between editing my videos, or are unable to upload as often as others. I can still be valuable and even fun to be around. If only I'm allowed to work at my own pace. As long as I'm trying my best and accept that every day, that best is going to look a little different. And that's okay. Now that I have a better handle on coping with my illness, I'm even more psyched about the release of the sequel. Maybe this time, I can play it with my own two hands. Once I throw back some painkillers with a cup of tea, strap on my wrist braces, and wrap myself in my heating pad, I'm gonna be unstoppable. Well, until I need a nap, of course. But if I ever figure out a way to stay awake, it's over for all you hoes. Thank you so much for watching, and thank you to Supergiant Games for giving me this experience in one of the hardest periods of my life. I know it probably wasn't their intention to rep chronic fatigue, but it really meant a lot to me. More than they could ever know. I really needed to see it, and it just happened to hit me at just the right time. And special thank you to Titus over on Avon. This video wouldn't have been possible without her taking the time to record and provide gameplay footage for me to use. I'm always astounded by the kindness I find over on Avon, and I know a lot of my subscribers are from there too. You guys make me so proud to be Ace. We truly have an amazing community. My name is Dark Tea Time, by the way. Hey, hello. My pronouns are they, them, and I discuss asexuality, queerness, disability, and chronic illness through the lens of fiction and pop culture. If you liked this video, it'd mean a lot to me if you liked or subscribed. But no pressure. We believe in free choice around here. All right, Dark Tea Time out. Peace.